You know, it's funny how coincidences come about. At exactly this time, two o'clock, a year ago, I was on Orkney on my quest to be the first to ride an electric motorbike from Land's End to John O'Groats, um, which I did. And then I, I followed that up, decided to carry on riding up to the top of Shetland to score. And as part of this journey, I stopped on Orkney and I met up with Jonathan Porterfield of Eco Cars, who sells, who's an electric car specialist dealership and sells across Orkney and indeed across the whole of the UK. And uh, Jonathan agreed to meet up and he, was, he showed me around Orkney very kindly and took me to see various projects that um, help make Orkney 100% based on renewable electricity, which is quite an impressive feat. Yeah, while I was on Orkney, Jonathan took me up to Hamas Hill to show me the wind farm there. And he also recorded, um, took some footage of me riding the bike while he followed alongside. Now the car he was driving at that precise time is the car I'm now driving right now, the exact car. After we'd filmed the bits with the bike, we went back to Jonathan's house, put the bike into charge while we went into Kirkwall and we took this car into Kirkwall and I was a passenger in the car and I really liked it I was quite taken by it a few days ago the car was for sale again we decided that it was probably time we became a, a two-car household of course there was no chance that we were going to get a stinking internal combustion engine vehicle that thought would never enter our heads. So we talked a little bit about it and um, we decided essentially to go halves on this, on this car. So a few days later, it's been shipped down from Orkney and is now with us in Warwickshire. And the car I'm driving is the Smart 4.2 ED. So that's the fully electric one. And it's already been christened by the kids. It's called Smarty. It's fairly predictable. So it turned up yesterday on the back of a lorry. And uh, we took it out for a little little drive yesterday evening, not far. I booked the day off work today so I could have a bit more of a play with it. And yeah, it's a nice little car. So, a few things to, to comment about it. The first obvious one is it's a two-seater nice nice tight little car obviously easy to fit in parking spaces that you would you might otherwise struggle to fit bigger cars in technically it's a 17.6 kilowatt hour battery uh, it's a 2014 model i believe that makes it third generation I'm not 100 percent sure on that i think that makes it a third generation range is supposedly good for around 90 miles uh, when I switched it on this uh, earlier on it actually said 90 miles range that has now dropped significantly it's now saying 60 miles on the guessometer but that will be based on recent bit of driving nevertheless it's quite a drop uh, it's not going to be a problem for us but um, it's a noticeable drop. I don't know how, at this point, I don't know how reliable the guessometer is on, on this car. There's a few little features on it that, that are quite nice. It's got um, flappy paddles either side of the steering wheel. And those allow you to increase or decrease the amount of regenerative braking. And there's three settings, so you can have it on a neutral setting. You can, you can have additional, um, an additional rate of regenerative braking, or you can effectively make it so that the, the car, not coasts, but you know, doesn't break itself using the motor. That's quite useful, actually. It gives it, it gives it a little bit more flexibility than there is in the Leaf, for instance. Yeah, the difference with the leaf in terms of regenerative braking is <coughs> it's either in drive mode or the, in, on the leaf or it's in braking mode. 
whereas this allows you to effectively turn regen off completely have it on a moderate setting or have it on quite a high setting and the high setting is is very good it's it's more aggressive regenerative braking than that is available in the leaf in in b mode so you can drive a lot more using you know without using brakes even in town driving for instance obviously being aware that if there's people behind you you know there's no brake light so you have to bear that in mind and I've already worked out that accepting what I've said about giving information to road users behind you know via brake lights I've already worked out that you can you can very much use the the paddles as part of your normal driving as part of your normal braking because unlike the leaf they're, they're right by your hands right next to the steering wheel whereas on the leaf you have to put reach your left hand down to or your right hand if you're in uh, countries where they drive on the right you have to put your hand down and switch the modes that way nice little gimmicky feature in terms of how you're driving how it rates your eco driving there's a little display down at the bottom of the uh, of the dash that gives you a percentage rating and it starts the journey at 50 percent rating and if you're driving you know eco consciously if you're braking and you know you're not braking too heavily or you're not ex and you're not accelerating too heavily you're using energy efficiently it, it gives you a high rating accordingly if you're driving like a ruddy hooligan you'll drop below 50 percent it's a little bit more descriptive than the, the trees on the leaf as cute as a little gimmick that is having said that it's not going to really affect the way I drive whatsoever so just a gimmick just open the back lift the top there and there's a tab on either side of this lower section which just drops down and then within there you see you've got the uh, type 2 Menekes cable and under here so this section nicely stowed away is the uh, granny cable and a wheel locking nut okay for a two-seater car that's not an unreasonable amount of space in the back you can fit quite a few things in there you can probably fit a largest shop there but what is quite odd is um, looking back when you're in the driver's seat and you've got the window immediately behind you that does look a bit strange <laughs> it takes some getting used to there's no lock for the key on this side the key's a remote key but there is actually one on this side on the uh, on the passenger side now I would pop the front to show you what's in the front but obviously there is nothing in the front nothing to see the battery is underneath the seats and towards the back of the car so nothing to see in the front so here's the dashboard view there's a little stalk here on the right with the wipers and things which gives you access to the various menu settings on here in terms of what you can display so you got that which is the standard um, with the odometer on the left there so 23,455 miles yeah came came to us pretty much 23,400 Estimated range underneath 45 miles. Temperature, eco, I talked about earlier, that's rating your driving really. You start with 50% on a journey, and um, the closer you are to 100%, the more, the, the more economically you're driving, eco friendly. If we flip down this menu, okay, you can set the time, the settings, charge and depart time. So you can set a time for. Um, if you need to go somewhere you can set a regular time by which point the car should be finished charging so it works slightly differently from the leaf where you set, you, you you essentially set up your the times you want the car to charge with this you say i need to be gone at this point and uh, you obviously let the car decide when it wants to start charging and then you've got reset and start that stuff okay it's just resetting and starting the trip stuff um yeah so that's it in terms of the the, the menu there uh, these buttons on the side here allow you to reset trip counters and things. Um, onto this central console. Now, see if we can get away from the sunlight a bit. Um, 
I've got a small problem with this and it's supposedly quite a common problem with the smart display unit in that the left hand side of the screen works fine the right hand side doesn't work at all and it does seem to be yeah sort of the left to the middle is okay but as soon as you get to the right hand side there's nothing now in terms of what can be done about this it doesn't look good actually um, could just be, if I'm lucky, it could just be that the screen needs recalibrating but I don't think that's the case because simply because the left hand side of the screen is working now if it were all off you know if it were all if the point on the screen that I was touching uh, was the same across the screen itself the whole screen then I would put it down to calibration but the fact that it's working on the left hand side seemingly um, but not the right, you know, it doesn't matter where you press on the right, nothing's happening. As soon as you press on the left, you get something happening. So, I don't think it's a calibration issue. It could be that it just needs a factory reset, but again, I, f I fear the worst. I actually think the console, based on what I've read online, I actually think it's a new console job and that is not cheap uh, okay I'm basing this on what I know so far I've had the car under 24 hours so at this stage I'm not really sure a, a slight design flaw on the part of uh, the smart people Mercedes is that they've put a means of recalibrating the screen under extras which is all well and good so long as you can get into extras. Mmm, a bit of a design flaw there. It will play DVDs, <laughs> oddly. Uh, in terms of music, there are several options. See, that works okay. Um, CD, DVD, obviously, USB. There's a USB connection in the glove box here. Just down the right-hand side, next to a mini jack as well. Mini jack socket. Um, so yeah, USB connection, SD... SD card, I think that's in here, we'll have a look in a second. Uh, Bluetooth, obviously, iPod doesn't apply to me, and that's the AUX for the uh, mini jack socket. So yeah, pressing this button here, flips rather like the leaf, and there's an SD slot there. So that's where the SD would go, and the CD or DVD slot just at the top. Oh yeah, pity that's not working. Um, it'd be nice to get that sorted. Otherwise, down here we've got heated seats. We've got uh, locks, so central locking for, you know, to lock and unlock the doors. On here we've got the air conditioning, all the whoa, <laughs> all the temperature controls, yeah, air recirculation, blah blah blah. Set the temperature there, all fairly obvious. Uh, what else to say about inside? Uh, the gear shift, or the gear shift, the stick is just uh, park, reverse, neutral and drive. That's a standard key, reminds me of a Saab, the key down there. And it's a standard handbrake, none of the, uh, none of the foot brake like there is on the, not, uh, like there is on the leaf. So fairly standard. Just for contrast, now we've had that blowing, we'll just turn it off. So that's the car running without the noisy aircon. Gives you an idea. In terms of how we're doing range versus guessometer wise, when I started off, I started off at with 90 miles on the guessometer, it's currently on 52 miles. If I just go to that there, you can see there I've done 28 miles, so coming on 30 miles. Anyway, that's just a brief introduction to the Smart. Like I say, I've had it under 24 hours. Um, I wanted to get out and have a little a little play with it. They're all initial impressions. Haven't had a proper look through the manual yet, so I'm very much an, a newbie, to use that expression. 
Uh, I really, I'm really not qualified to talk in any great detail about it. It's just initial impressions, initial findings. And I thought it'd be nice to make the film, to, to film this today, given that it was, it was exactly a year ago today that I went in this very car and um, had a very nice time on Orkney, uh, meeting up with Jonathan Porterfield and exploring Orkney for the first time, never been there before. And then um, heading up to Shetland that evening. Thank you very much for watching this first in what will hopefully be a series on uh, using living with the smart. I'm not going to call it that. I'm going to call it some other pun thing, I think. I think I'll call it smart moves. Yeah. you got to have a pun. you got to have a pun in the title. Yeah, thank you very much for watching and um, hope to see you again soon. Cheers, bye for now.